heavens have always presented a challenge to man. Many secrets remain locked in space, secrets that have puzzled men for centuries. The search for knowledge about space is underway. At Cape Canaveral, launch pad five. Preparations for the MR3 flight began weeks before launch day. You went out and watched the redstone slowly, carefully raised into place on the launch pad. You knew that you might be the pilot. For about 10 days prior to meeting with the spacecraft, the Redstone underwent exhaustive tests, inspections, and simulated launch operations. This vital part of the mission, the launch vehicle, must be as near perfect as man can make it before the spacecraft is installed. You and your fellow astronauts followed the test program closely. forces were dispatched and on their way to their stations downrange. You remember the feeling you had that this was the day. There'd be no scrub today. The mission would go. You remember the ride to the pad in the transport van. You had rehearsed the procedure before, taken the ride to the pad and climbed into the spacecraft. But this time, you knew it was the real thing. Shepard goes through the pre-launch countdown, he knows the system is as ready as human effort can make it. As the gantry is pulled back, the emergency vehicle known as the cherry picker is raised into position. Might be needed. Astronauts Carpenter and Shira take off to make direct aerial observation of the early portion of your flight. The Recovery Force helicopters are airborne. All elements of the mission have reported ready to the control center, and the launch is go. All right, uh, lift off, and the clock is started. Yes, sir. Reading you loud and clear. This is Freedom 7. The fuel is go 1.2 G. Cabin at 14 PSI. Oxygen is go. When, uh, when Cooper and uh, his family and the other astronauts and families were invited to the White House, 
for cocktails with Jack Kennedy. And we stopped at Jim Webb's house first and had a little warm up there. And I was politicking with Webb and I said, you know, Mr. Webb, uh, we could put this baby up there in just a matter of a few weeks. I mean, it's all ready to go and have the rockets. We have, And just let it, you know, let me sit up there, and, you know, see how long it'll last. Get another record out of it. Well, he said, no, I don't. Uh, he said, I really don't think so. I think we've got to get on with Gemini. And I said, well, I'm going to see the president in a little while. Uh, you, th you mind if I mention it to him? He said, no, but you tell him my side of the story, too. So I said, all right. So we get over there and we're all sipping our booze and uh, let's get some of our taxpayers' money back drinking at the White House. And uh, I got Kennedy aside and I said, uh, there's a possibility we could make another long duration Mercury flight, maybe two, maybe three days. Uh, and uh, we'd like to do that. He said, well, what does Mr. Webb think about it? And I said, Webb doesn't want to do it. He said, well, he said, I think I'll have to go along with Mr. Webb. <laughs> it made you realize the power didn't, <laughs> the power behind the throne. At least I tried. On the periscope, what a beautiful view. Bow cover over Florida, three to four tenths near the eastern coast. Obscure is up to Hatteras. With me, I think it had to be the challenge of being able to control a new vehicle in a new environment. This is a generalization, but it's something which I'd been doing for many, many years as a Navy pilot, as a carrier pilot. And believe me, it's a lot harder to land a jet on an aircraft carrier than it is to land a limb on a moon. <laughs> and That's a piece of cake, that moon deal. But that was part of my life, was the challenge, and here you had Yes, a new environment, but, you know, for fighter pilots who fly upside down uh, a lot of the time, zero gravity wasn't that big a deal. Now, of course, none of us being, uh, of course, non-medics had thought about the long-term effects of zero gravity, but the short-term effects of zero gravity were not the challenge to us. The challenge was to be able to fly an unusual craft and provide good, positive thinking control of that vehicle. Main chute is raced. Main chute is green. Main chute is coming unraced and it looks good. Main chute is good. Rate of descent is reading about 35 feet per second. MR-3 followed a normal ballistic arc, peaking at about 115 mile altitude. The spacecraft landed 300 miles downrange. The complete flight took 16 minutes and gave Alan Shepard about five minutes of weightlessness. After the spacecraft landed, Shepard and the craft were on the Lake Champlain. Complete and detailed information on the flight and on Alan Shepard was recorded from launch to recovery. Information to be made available to scientists and interested people the world over. Project Mercury. 
another step in man's search for knowledge. Freedom 7, another step toward man in space.